look at Africa in general, Africa is like a beggar. There's a lot of corruption. They have no discipline. The people in authority are not honest. In Kenya, my concern has been looking at the kind of leaders we have produced through the years. Quite a number demand that they be bribed. If you want to change by maybe jailing people, it won't change them. We need to go to the root of the problem. It is good to start approaching it in the younger generation. We have started a school. It's a vision that the Lord birthed into my heart. We touch young people through education. Sub Academy is a very good school. We refer to this school as a school with a difference. It is a school with a difference. It is a school with a difference. Paul's mission is not just to teach. The desire was to impart into little boys and girls the spiritual moral principles. We mold a character spiritually. It helps the inner man. Of course, we teach them the Bible. We'd like to know this child should know the Creator. Everybody, Jesus was crucified. He died for our sins. He died for you and for. So we teach them that they should live a pure life. Character building. And then give them good academic background. He's trying to make a complete person. Not only in books matters. Building a whole person academically, socially, physically, mentally, and even spiritually. That's how we are tending to these children. We are taught about how to behave well, to be honest, and how to be responsible. They give me a hint on how to, to live in my future life. Africa, we've had many people dying of AIDS. In fact, these days, the business of orphans is a booming business. Each minute, seven people die of AIDS in Kenya today. Some tribes, by their culture, they have been passing AIDS on. Many African tribes, they believed in polygamy. My father used to have two wives. They also believed in inheritance. Wife inheritance. Now my mother is the second wife. If a man has died and the wife has remained, the kinsmen of that clan have to inherit the wife. And it is causing a big problem with the HIV. As a leader and as a minister, attend a lot of funerals. Some children, young children have been left in the homes. They've got no one to take care of them. Their parents have died. I have only one parent. One is dead. My father passed away. My parents are dead. Mm -hmm. And my mother died this year, suffering from HIV. I was in school. My aunt came to inform me about the death of my father. So there are bigger problems which may require someone to come in and help. God can change the direction, and it is important to listen. People are coming, bringing children. And the director being a pastor. He has that heart. He empathizes. At our school, Sub Academy, some of the students are orphans. And therefore, that one changes now the original plan. And those who don't have parents, they don't have any other place to live. This is a need which just came in. So God is directing us because of this problem of HIV. We have about 160 that stay. Staying, but not in dormitories. It's not like an orphanage. Sleeping in classrooms. We have provided the top floor for dormitory. For example, girls are sleeping in the computer room. We have moved our computers from there. Boys are sleeping in classes. One is a French class, 
and the others were just normal classes. Good night, boys. Good night. Because we saw the need. Because they have nowhere to go. Poverty is a big problem. It's like uh, the curse. Employment is very lean. As in most third world countries, getting an education, becoming a professional person is half of the job. We're talking about a country that if there's one welding job available, there's a hundred people to apply for. And therefore, they have depended on peace and farming. If there is a drought, there is hunger. We go around the government curriculum to teach a little further. We are trying to teach our children to learn, to earn. Because if I, I leave school, there is nothing I will do in future. We need to provide a skill. If you don't know even English, you can't get even a job for watchman. For example, we teach computer skills, which is not common. We teach them a, a little more on agriculture. And this, these are the things that are going to help us to advance our vision in the area of equipping them with skills and then provide funding that will help them to further that skill. Then hold them accountable to be able to generate income, but at the same time pay whatever we would have given them to help them to start what they want to do. We believe that is good economic empowerment. One of the things we've been facing is feeding them. In my former school, we didn't used to eat at lunchtime. Most public schools don't have um, meal programs. When I'm so hungry, I feel something is just talking in my stomach. A hungry child cannot be able to get what the teacher is saying. One of our goals at Serve Academy is when these orphans come, we want to give them the best treatment. On the side of the physical, we decided that we are supposed to feed our children. You'll find that it's a lot of food <laughs> that we are preparing. In fact, we spend a lot of money on meals. Think of yourself. You know what it costs to feed you and your family. Think about 800 or more meals a day. People are bringing more orphans, but we cannot help everybody because of the facility and our financial ability. Actually, what parents are paying in, I can't say it's enough, but we have learned how to live with what we have at hand. In our country, we still have tribes. Some people practice witchcraft. And animism. We have animal sacrifices. They have to appease by killing a cow. Then some blood is collected. Give to the spirits the blood. Then they pour on the ground. You know, African tradition, some people believe that the dead are still living. So they have to appease the spirits. He may demand, go and bring to chicken. They say this goes to the ancestors. To the spirits, to appease the spirits. Some of their ideas on how to cure AIDS are gruesome. To have sex with a baby. We heard that there is a the couple that sacrificed their, their son. I don't understand calculus. I certainly don't understand that. I understand that education is the way I can understand calculus and it's a way that they can understand that's not the remedy. We teach the children about God's love. We feed them spiritually. We are taught the word of God. We teach them that Jesus Christ was sacrificed. Jesus came to the world to save us from our sins. A witch doctor takes the place of the Savior. And the witchcraft is to do with the devil. We don't need to go and seek for other sacrifices. Jesus Christ died once and died for all of us. And we tell them, if you receive Jesus Christ, you don't need to go and practice these things again. 
I'm now saved since I came in this school. Because Jesus came and saved me from my sins. We teach them how to pray, teach them how to worship, teach them how to read the word. Some academy, one of the things we are teaching is abstinence. We have had cases where kids get pregnant even at age 12 in uh, public schools. We teach on AIDS in our curriculum to make them aware at a tender age. We have not had no case of pregnancy in the existence of this school. Now this is our tendency. They grow up as God-fearing children. Paul lives in a third world country. They're scratching for everything. I feel that we need to have a home. We need more space. We need a dormitory. We need more space. We need it so quick. That's one of his needs, to reclaim his school, to be a school. We also need to be able to feed these kids. Put yourself in that position. For you to go to the supermarket to get food for your family, you need money. Every month, if we have $30, that is a dollar a day, we'll be able to take care of an orphan. You multiply that times 450, and you have Paul Logano out there just struggling, struggling, struggling every month. Should God touch you to do something through some international ministries, God will bless you. God will bless you. I know God is working by the change I see in the lives of people. A word has gone round. If you have a rude child, take that child to serve. The child will change. I used to like fighting. Since I came inside here and here, had the word of God, I stuck to that. I believe if we have men and women who have the fear of God, who will be honest and walk in integrity. He wants to teach children to have moral Christian values so that if they get into the government, they can build a better government. And we cannot change the nation if we don't have those kind of men and women. I don't know that I have a friend in the United States that has such lofty goals as Paul. Imagine what kind of leaders we will have. What a mission. We have seen God do many things. We have seen the parents come to our church, become members of our churches because of their children coming to our school. Children are a bridge between us with their parents and their guardians. And they have become good ambassadors even to go back home and tell the parents. Those who are not believers, they end up believing and getting saved. Paul has seven churches in addition to his school. To see the number of people that have been saved. I think God is using Salve Academy to show people the way. They are amazed. They are amazed. I'm amazed too. That's what I'm saying, God is working through Sav Academy. And this is what Sav is all about, to bring change, to bring hope, to bring blessing into the lives of people. Mm -hmm.